I'm delighted to say I've been joined by uh, Dr. Steve Cox from St. Helens CCG. Thank you very much for taking the time uh, to join us. How are you, sir? I'm very well, thank you. I'd like to uh, say hello to Sally and everybody else uh, in the room today. Thank you for joining us. This is RAGM, but it's also a, a Star Standard Celebration event. Um, tell us about the Star Standard from, from, from the perspective of the St. Helens Clinical Commissioning Group. Do you think it's been a success? Is it going to drive up standards? Okay, well, the star standard for us is like a kite mark mm. for third sector organisations. It gives reassurance to commissioners, such as the local authority or the, or the health service, in other words, the CCG locally, mm. um, that the organisations we're dealing with um, have um, the capacity and the capability to do what they say uh, that they say they do, yeah. if you like. A bit like, what they, what, like the Maunders uh, paint advert. Right, <laughs> so they do what they say on the tin. That's we... it, yeah. Have you found that in the past it's been difficult to get colleagues to buy in? Has there been a mistrust of the voluntary sector? Not a mistrust, but concerns over whether or not, as you said, they do have the capacity and, yeah. and the relevant skills? I, I don't think so recently. Yeah. I think we've seen um, with Holton and St Helens um, CVS a, a great sort of um, sort of sort of greater sort of governance and organisation of the uh, of the voluntary sector groups. Um, but in the distant past, yes, there was great variability between organisations and services weren't always what perhaps people expected when they sent patients to them. Mm. And what's important for a GP on the ground, if we commission a service, uh, is that they send a patient to it in the knowledge that the patient's going to get a good standard of care and an appropriate level of care. Absolutely, because that, it must reflect back on their own work if they refer a patient to a service that then doesn't deliver it. It reflects poorly on them. And, and do you think going forward that there is increased confidence that the voluntary sector is capable of delivering services to the standard you'd expect? Yes, I think there's evidence that the standard is going up. And I think for the future there's a lot of optimism that as we move services more and more into the community and try and make the community more and more resilient, mm -hmm. uh, that actually the third sector can play a very key part in that. Uh, as you know, um, it's widely recognised that uh, if, you, if you spend a pound with the voluntary sector, you get about £1.80's worth of, of, uh, of service. And so it's got to be good business, um, provided the, uh, the, the quality's there. Absolutely. Far be it from me, me to disagree. Um, tell me about the self-care agenda, and, and can the STAR standard help voluntary sector organisations to respond? to the self-care agenda. Yes, I mean, I'll give you an example. We're trying at the moment to get patients appropriately out of hospital at the right time in a timely fashion to home in a, in a safe manner. Now, obviously, local authority puts a lot of effort into that and primary care and community services and the hospital themselves put a lot of effort into that. But patients who've been in hospital for 14 days, if they live on their own, they haven't got anything in their fridge. And as you know, there are schemes around where voluntary sector organisations can go out, they can stock up the person's fridge, and they can keep an eye on that person for the fortnight after they get out of hospital. Right. These are the kind of innovative things that are happening now which are enabling people to look after themselves at home, uh, particularly after a difficult admission to hospital. And I suppose anything that prevents readmission is, is good financially and good for the patient too? Well, I think primarily you have to say it's good for the patient. Yeah. If, it's, if it's good financially, I suppose that helps us give that, that money to other patients' care. But I think the most important thing, it helps people stay in their own home mm. and gives them confidence about being there. Final question from me. If there are any voluntary sector organisations in the audience at today's AGM that are unconvinced about whether or not they should invest the time in achieving the STAR standard, what would be your message to them? I, I think in the future partners like local authorities and CCGs will work together to commission services from voluntary sector organisations that have the STAR standard because we recognise that as a kite mark, so I would encourage you to do it. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak Thank to us this you. afternoon. Okay, I'm joined uh, by Dave Sweeney from uh, Holton Clinical Commissioning Group. Dave, thank you so much for taking the time to speak to us today at our AGM and STAR Standard Celebration. Uh, first question for you about the STAR Standard, can it help groups win business? That's a really good, tough question. Um, can it help bis win business? Um, I have to say, it must be able to. I mean, I, you know, I kind of, with all the great people that are um, watching this right now, I mean, I don't want people to kind of hold me to this, but as a standard, as, um, as a kite mark, it means that, that the organisation is well set up, 
mm. to demonstrate quality, demonstrate its efficiency, demonstrate that as a business it can supply exactly what it's specified to do. I think we need to work together to uh, tightly knit that specification and make sure that people are um, delivering what they should be doing. But that's got to hold that organisation in good stead. It has to. And I, you know, I've heard from a lot of uh, a lot of colleagues that um, are sat in the room right now, and I know it's caused you know angst and pain and, and, and work that um, you know they could have probably done without. But yeah. the feedback is the feedback has been great, and I do know of organisations that have won businesses. Uh, have one uh, business on the back of the Star Standard, or the Star Standard being a major contributor yeah. to that uh, to that business. We've got evidence of that. Um, so uh, yeah, I mean, we've got to we've got to hope that that is definitely a um, you know an outcome from yeah. from developing the standard. As a, as a representative of an infrastructure organisation, it's obvious that I would say this, but I, I think any time an organisation spends on itself improving its behind the scenes activities. I think that's never time wasted. No, and no, not at all. And what when we when we set out to do the standard, uh, and we, we worked uh, myself, Debbie Dolby, and Sally at the time. We, we we had that in the back of our minds that these are small organisations, predominantly run by volunteers in yeah. many cases. And you know, is it something that we should be initiating on? And we you know we battled hard with that. But uh, as I say, kind of you know, so years down the line now. Um, you know the systems are set up now, financially set up. There's robust mm. infrastructure in there, and if you kind of a, if you imagine a, um, you know, a voluntary sector CQC, yeah, to, absolutely, you know, um, perish the thoughts. Well, yeah. like, let's say if we, if we did, you know, we've got we've got a sector now that is really is really robust, uh, yeah. and, and it's definitely worth it's definitely worth the time and effort. And as ever, Matt, and I said this, you know, to to anybody that's listened to this in the room, I've said it uh, consistently now, probably for the last five to six years. We would always support if people are struggling with the standard and struggling to get to that point because of their infrastructure. Because we would always support that and help nurture that and push that along and uh, be as flexible as we possibly can. So, yeah, um, yeah. I, 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 as you know, I'm a, I really race it. And you've always been a firm supporter of the voluntary sector, Dave, yeah. and we thank you for that. Have you found with colleagues who you must have met throughout the statutory sector that that, that that the, the star standard is helping them to give them peace of mind, shall we say, about the quality of services and and the robust nature of projects. I think what it's done more than anything now is to is to kind of from a clinical commissioning point of view, we're in a different arena. Mm. And I think you know from uh, clinicians who are accountable for that individual yeah. wholly to referring on to uh, uh, organisations that they didn't really have much of a clue about and that could. Um, they were quite transient, would change on a kind of on a on a regular basis. Yeah. And you know, that for example, a GP, that is, it's you know, that accountability is huge. Mm. So they, you know, that referring agent needs to be assured that the organisation is strong and robust. Yeah. And um, and I think that's exactly what the standard the standard sets out. And now we've got clinicians who are part of commissioning, clinicians who are part of that, you know, that wider infrastructure. You know, who have yeah. that ability to see that written down and to. And demonstrated, and I'll tell you what else uh, what I'm really keen on is is making sure that um, we use the standard and, and devolve uh, the, yeah. the evolved mechanism within that to really stop counting and measuring things that we don't need to that we really don't need to measure. Yes, just widgets and just you know kind of inexcusable amounts of data that mean absolutely mm -hmm. nothing for anybody. The sector is flexible. The sector works with people that statutory organisations can't reach mm. and it's that detail and it's that kind of mechanism that we really want to tease out and I think that is the, is the next step for us is that performance Fantastic. performance management that the STAR standard gives us the platform and the foundations to build upon yeah. so I think without that we would have been unable to kind of move on to the next you know the next step which is to, you know to yeah. uh, to measure things that really make a difference in the borough good to hear i suppose that the star standards it's win for the voluntary sector but it's also win for you guys as if you as you say along with tools like evolve it's helping you to record what really matters and, and, and how services are being delivered one final question before you go i'm sure there'll be groups at the agm today who think well i'd love to achieve that but it's so much time and energy and I, i'm busy delivering frontline services what would your message be to those groups who aren't sure about whether or not to try and achieve the star standard? I mean, I guess it would come to no surprise to anybody, but I would really, you know, I'd really 
push those organisations to uh, to go for it. And again, yeah. don't you're not on your own. These are there are you know there are people out there that can support you and your organisation in uh, in doing that. You know, learn from speak to others that have got it. You know, learn from that kind of learn from that experience. Yeah. And if nothing else, it will give your your organisation the depth and the understanding that it takes to be a commissionable a commissionable service. Now, many of you in the room might say, well, there's apps, you know, I want to avoid statutory funding like the plague because we don't want that kind of bureaucracy in the infrastructure. It doesn't matter. The Star Standard will give you opportunities to link into other bits of funding and other opportunities that you won't have before. I am convinced of that. Fantastic. So, um, you know, absolutely go for it. Brilliant. Dave, thank you so much for your time You're today. You're very welcome.